What is going on, everyone? And welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Now, look, I know I say this a lot, but today's first entitled parent story is just utterly bamboozling. I could not believe it when I saw the title. I couldn't believe it when I started reading it. And now, having finished reading it, I'm just in a state of shock. I can't quite believe it. I'm recording this intro after the story, it's just to make that clear. It's incredible. It made me rethink my entire life. Let's just leave it at that. Pretty much, a mother, OP in the story, goes and gets a COVID vaccine with her daughter. A great thing, you would think. But no, her mother said, I'm never speaking to you again. Let's get into it. I vaccinated my child. My mother is not happy about it. I currently don't speak to my mother, nor have I for many months now. But somehow she still finds ways to butt into my life and the decisions I make for my child. My husband and I both come from anti-vax families. His side is against it, but doesn't shame us for vaccinating our daughter. My mother, however, really has a lot to say about it. Since we both were raised to not believe in science, it was pretty natural for us to be against vaccinating our daughter when she was born. I actually had a home birth, so it was easy to avoid everything. We would lie to pediatricians about it and just did what our parents did when we were kids. But since the new vaccine for COVID was released, I started to consider getting it and I decided to do some actual research on vaccines as a whole. My husband and I then made the decision to get vaccinated as well as getting a schedule started for our six month old baby to catch her up. We went in this morning to get her first shots. Everything went smoothly and so far she seems fine. She's been fussy and sleepier than usual, but the pediatrician said that's normal and will go away in a day or two. We left feeling proud that we were able to educate ourselves effectively and set our baby up for success. Then I get a call. It's my grandpa, or so I thought. I answer and the first thing I hear is, when you wake up and she isn't breathing, you'll be sorry. I can't believe you did this to my little girl. I hang up immediately and start to panic. I eventually trace it back to a family member that is a doctor. I was asking her questions about vaccines and I told her we were going in today. I guess she told my grandpa how excited she was for us and then he told my mum, and then boom, end of the world. My mother-in-law found out later and seemed supportive given her opinions about vaccines. She told us, it's your decision and I trust that whatever you do is what's best for her. So I'm glad we have her to help reassure us a bit. But now I've been getting texts and calls from my mum through my grandpa's phone, absolutely freaking out, saying that she hopes something happens to her so I will see the consequences of my actions, also that she is praying for her, whatever that means. Ultimately, we are confident with our decision and will continue with her schedule. Although at times we do question if we made the right one. I'm sure everything will be fine, but my mother seriously needs to chill out. Seriously, what sort of horrible person hopes that something bad happens to your kid just because you've done something that they disagree with in terms of looking after them? It's me honestly, that is mind blowing. Saying that, that is crazy. How can you really care about a child whilst also saying, I hope something bad happens to her to make you guys learn that vaccines are not the one? I mean, first of all, it's obvious that, that vaccines are great. Otherwise, you know, there'd be a lot more deaths in the world. Like, I don't I don't understand the anti-vax argument, to be honest. I never have done. I never will because vaccines just clearly work. I, I was going to say, if you believe in science, you believe in vaccines. But yeah, this woman doesn't even believe in science. She's so idiotic. But anyway, <sighs> wishing harm upon someone's baby because they go against something that you, that you believe in. It's just mental. The one thing I'm happy about is that you say in the intro, P, that you don't currently speak to your mother. They're <laughs> a great decision. First of all, there's probably many, many more reasons for it than just this. But um, yeah, it, it's no surprise that you've made that decision. Uh, yeah, well done. Never speak to her again. Maybe uh, change your identity, move to another country. Make sure that you never interact with that woman again because she is nothing but trouble. Now moving on to our next post. Karen's demon semen. <laughs> De yeah. Karen's demon semen holds my kid hostage on Easter. Demon semen. Uh, that's a good one. Safe to say I do not get along with my wife's family. They blame me for turning her gay. So during- oh my god, this has not started off well. All right, they blame you, OP, for turning her gay. So during holiday get-togethers, I focus on the kids or tuck myself into a corner away from everyone else. That's where I was when the trouble began. The small house was crowded with bodies for Easter dinner. Now this story happened pre-pandemic. And since the kids were off playing, I settled in a seat in the corner. 
My sister-in-law rounded the corner with large eyes to tell me your daughter is screaming for you I was struck by her wording. So as I got up, I asked she's calling for me. No, she's screaming Well that kicked my parental instincts into high gear and I bolted to the playroom down the hall I could hear my daughter seven at the time screaming and wailing even before I reached the door But the door was locked I'll admit, I could have taken an extra moment to get someone inside the playroom to unlock the door, but I was focused solely on reaching my kid. So, I gripped the handle and turned it hard enough to pop the lock out of place and shove open the door. Of course, the first face I see is Stacy, Karen's little spoiled brat, staring up at me with wide eyes because the door had nearly hit her when I forced it open. In the next moment, my daughter is clinging to me, tears streaking down her cheeks. She was in a full panic, screeching at me what had happened. Apparently, she wasn't playing the way Stacey had wanted her to play. And when they started to argue, my daughter tried to leave instead of fight. That's when Stacey locked the door and stood in front of her, so my daughter couldn't leave the room. Now, Stacey's a bit older and taller, so my daughter couldn't make her move, and that is when she started screaming for help. I was so angry, and I tried to talk to Stacey to show her how her actions affect other people. That child has absolutely no empathy. She just shrugged, and that was my tipping point. I announced loudly that my daughter wasn't to play with Stacy anymore. I picked her up and carried her to my wife, her parent of choice. Only when Stacy started crying did anyone else get involved. All those adults, no one responded to my kid screaming for help, but as soon as Stacy tears up, the whole world stops. Karen, Stacy's mum, followed me into the front room. <laughs> She's got it going on. Can I just say that? <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Karen, Stacy's mum, followed me into the front room, yelling about how mean I am to children. She's just a child, was thrown out more than once. I realized I started a full-blown fight and was about to tell my wife we should leave when my wife goes into mother bear mode. Oh, and by the way, guys, OP is female and has a wife, if that wasn't clear. I should mention that at this point, my wife was about five months pregnant with our second child and very hormonal. She saw our daughter crying, heard Karen yelling at me, and something in her snapped. Usually, she is very soft-spoken, so much so that her family thought I somehow control her every thought and action, hence them blaming me for turning her gay. They no longer believe that, after this day my wife and karen get into a screaming match my wife steps toe to toe with her older cousin who is used to pushing her around they are yelling so viciously that my mother-in-law ducks between them to guide my daughter out from in between them and distract her it was an admirably smooth rescue on her part actually i don't even remember what all was said but karen accused me of child abuse and my wife told her how badly she was failing stacy as a parent to allow her to act the way she does Everyone else was stunned for a few moments watching the exchange. I'd never heard my wife yell like that, and I'm sure it was a surprise to the rest of the family. Karen's mum, a saint of a woman we'll call the doctor, tried to break up the argument that was now at center stage, and my wife marched outside into the drizzle because she was still so angry. My mother-in-law was in the kitchen coloring with my daughter, so I followed my wife outside to try and calm her down. I swear, it was like a scene from a cartoon where my wife is pacing and shouting angry in the driveway and I'm just following her helplessly behind. After a few minutes, the doctor pokes her head out the door and hollers, you're gonna get that baby sick if you don't come inside. That got my wife to listen and we head back inside, both damp. My mother-in-law is just inside the door, ready to steer my wife away from Karen and the doctor is telling Karen she may just wanna pack up for the day. I sit back in my corner seats and let the family sort the drama out, feeling kind of smug about how quickly my wife had come to mine and my daughter's defense. Karen made quick work of packing up their things, and the doctor escorted her and Stacy to the door. Just before stepping out, Karen turns to me and spits, You should be nicer to children, OP. I just smirk and say, well, you should teach a child to play nicely with others. She gasped in anger and was about to say something else, but the doctor gently pushed her out of the door and helped her to her car. After we left, the family tried to blame my daughter for the trouble in the playroom, saying she was making mountains out of molehills, and I overreacted. We were the black sheep for a little while. A year later, my wife and I graduated from college, and we were having a celebratory dinner with her family. It was pleasant. Karen wasn't there with her demon semen, but the doctor showed up. 
She's a nice lady, so no trouble there until we were all getting ready to leave. I was waiting for my wife and the doctor sits next to me to make small talk. What are my plans after graduation? Are my parents happy for me? Just pleasant stuff. And then she says it. You know, we were talking to the other kids in the playroom that day and they said Stacy didn't lock the door. They all told me when it happened that she was the only one who touched the lock. Right, but we spoke to them later and they finally admitted that she didn't. I stayed silent. So, you know, we can let it go. I have let it go. You didn't need to bully those kids into lying for you, though. And with that, my wife came out of the restroom and I immediately stood up. Because our daughter didn't want to go and play at Stacy's house anymore, they all blamed me, saying I was the one keeping them apart. False. My kid just understands she doesn't have to suffer abuse just because we're family. Oh, uh, yeah, screw that. Who cares if you're family or not? If you don't like someone don't see them <laughs> pretty simple it's actually a bit weird right like if you you know come across a normal person out in the wild in public and you don't like them you probably never speak to them again right you wouldn't be friends with them you wouldn't see them again you just forget they ever existed why is it not the same with family i get that family is obviously like you know a genetic thing we're all the same bloodline and all that but why is there like an actual demand or like a i don't know like a it's a prerequisite that we have to always go and visit our family on certain days i mean i like it because i like my family so it's a nice tradition but what if everyone in a family hates each other surely at some point you just go you know what let's just sack this sack this all off because clearly none of us like each other our kids don't get along we argue as as parents should we just not see each other again and just be done with it and go and see our actual friends who we want to spend time with and our kids don't have to get bullied and abused by other people's kids wouldn't that be class i don't know sounds more enjoyable to me i don't really know why more families don't just split up and say yeah who cares we're family i'm done I mean, maybe that happens and I just don't know. But yeah, comment down below, guys. Do you like your family? And if you don't, if you despise them, do you still see them? And do you like talk to them on special days? Or do you just forget they even exist? Let me know. I'm actually quite interested. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, comment down below. If you are new around here as well, make sure to subscribe to the channel and watch more of my video. This is the most important thing you could do, yeah? Click this. All you got to do is click this. Nothing else. Really, you could subscribe with notifications on if you wanted to, if you were feeling extra delightful inside but the main thing is just tap this playlist you'll love it and i'll see you all tomorrow peace out